Right. And I think, I mean, we've been talking about just not going there, right? When we say, okay, someone says that crosses a line, that's going to squick me out. Um, you know, take your pick, uh, torture, rape, whatever that is. I mean, if you're running this game, you need to have tools to say, okay, this is how we're going to handle it right mm -hmm. up to that point, right? You can't just say, well, those sorts of things will never happen, the party will never be captured by the evil baddie, <coughs> there will never be torture, because then you're just taking sort of all, all risk out of it, but right. you have to have a way to say, okay, in the game, and whoever it was who said, well, I commit an atrocity, um, that was That's a brilliant way to handle, a brilliant way to handle yeah. it. And I mean, with sex, I mean, with some groups, I'll just say, you know, fade to black. We know what happens. Mm -hmm. They go upstairs. Who, who here her. has heard the term uh, lines and veils? Do you guys know this term? Anybody? Wow. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. Lines, lines and veils. Yeah. A line is something we're not going there. You know, we are not going to child rape. Ever, ever, ever. That is a line. A veil is something, like he said, fade to black. You know, your character is going to have a romance. You know, if that's what your character wants, I'm okay to give you with that. But you know what? We don't need to play that out as if it's like um, on a chat room. So we just <laughs> fade to black, you know? And then they kiss and then we close the doors and yeah, we'll move on. Okay, then the cortisol the cortisol off into the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I, I had a group who were, uh, you know, the kind of players who were like, I killed the queen of the fairies, and when I, when I fuck her stomp <laughs> of her neck, and <laughs> excellent. And, and I was like, okay, there, there's nothing really that I can really throw up this place to squip them out. And then I had a situation where I, it was, all the plot was built around this demon which collected people's fingers. Like everything was geared towards it. It was, it was pivotal. It was the it was the absolute couldn't be now sort of plot. We we got there and then all of a sudden one of the players said, I'm not okay with that. I'm okay with, with everything else, I'm okay with rape, murder, mayhem, uh, the worst thing possible. But that particular thing, no. But at that point we were like, Well, I guess we'll just stop playing because there's nothing else but that, that's, that's the plot, and all the clues, everything is hanging off this one thing. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard, to, it's hard when you haven't had a conversation and laid things out beforehand, because, and uh, suddenly you have to have this conversation, and, and it's, a, it's a killer. It's, well, it's, it's kind of a plan in the BDSM community, we call those landmines. Yeah. Because you <laughs> don't necessarily know that they're there. Yeah. Even the person who has it yeah. doesn't know it's there. Yeah. And yeah. it can just pop up, and the best you can do is sort of triage it. That's a, that's a sad story because yeah. you get a big landmine. And there were body parts everywhere. Yeah, and you need, you need to decide. I mean, are are you just going to kill it? Are you going to excuse them from the rest of the game? You know, are they willing to try to soldier on through it, regardless of how squicky it makes them? And that that's another point to have another conversation. And that's really all you can do. I mean, there's no take it time out. Yeah. Is there like one kind of hinted at for us about? To a certain extent, a lot of these are worse when they're unexpected. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if you throw child rape into a every weekend D and D game, it's a lot worse to the group than hey, if you guys, throw it into this. a werewolf game or something else. You know, if they're expecting it, those veils can be a lot farther. Those, those lines can be stretched farther. It, it's the sudden unexpected mm -hmm. introduction of something that can be a lot squiffier. And that's where you have to be really careful. Like, I didn't sign up for a game about that. Yeah. We, we have a joke in the, in the, in the Pervy and D crowd. If, if you have a line, it means you want us to push a little bit towards that. And if you have a veil, it means it's going to get talked about a lot. Mm -hmm. Sean? So there's a, a huge difference between talking about limits beforehand and actually being in situ. So how do you calibrate uh, in the middle of the game to determine what buttons to push, what buttons to avoid, what buttons might have been opened up for a situation? How do you how do you get that feedback from the players? If you watch the players. Yeah. 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 Watch, watch, watch the players, watch their expressions, watch their breathing, watch what they say, nervous laughter, tone of their voice. If they start doing the thing, you know that you're that doing that. that, 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 that if, if, they're, if they're doing the... Thing, that's a bad. No, if they're doing the cool, you know, then you're going the right way. Um, if they start, 
If people are packing up to leave, they may have gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> you here's watch here's the something players. I really like to tell everybody, and and this is I I'm a big fan of players' rights. I'm a big fan of, of you know open communication. Um, you have the right to say when something's not okay. You have the right to tell a GM or another player, "Hey, man, that's not cool. I don't dig on that. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're bugging that. You're, you're pushing buttons. Please don't." Um, you also have the right to say, "You know what? Um, I'm bored, and can we move towards something? You know, if this is supposed mm -hmm. to be a horror game, could we move towards some really some horror? Can we get a little more visceral? And if, and you know, do we agree? Yeah. You know, so." Ask for what you want. Just tell people what you're thinking. Um, you don't have to. gaming does not have to be passive aggressive. We are not a bunch of spurgan nerds in our basements anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Occasionally check in. It's just like he said. It's kind of like BDSM. You can check in and say, "Hey, is everything okay? Is this going all right?" And you know what? You can even do that just for the fun element too. Hey, is everybody having a good time? Um, actually, we had a question. Oh, 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 sorry. Go ahead. No. In, in most of the games I play, when somebody commits suicide, it is a tragic, beautiful moment, and everybody blows away from the table going, oh, that was so awesome. <laughs> so, 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 you know, I play some weird games. Yeah, I think it's usually a lack of willingness to retreat, which is later qualified. <laughs> 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 so much for delicate for um, Just real quick on the um, on the being able to talk about what you're okay with, what you're not okay with. Um, how you talk about those things is very important to how the game is going to continue. If you kind of freak out and go, "Oh my God, that was the worst thing ever," that's gonna change the dynamic for the rest of the game for everybody else, as opposed to being an adult, owning your emotions, realizing that you're having a problem, and saying. Hold on, let's step back a second. This is a problem. Sometimes it hits you really fast. Oh, no, I, I get it. Because, like, with the thing we mentioned earlier with my character, Lance, yeah. I actually burst into tears and left the table. Well, we both kind of handled it badly because yeah. one yeah, of the things you want to keep in mind happens. is don't accuse. When you're ever having a con uh, you know, a conflict at the table, an interpersonal conflict, not an in game conflict, don't accuse. Don't say, you know what, you did that and you suck. Say, you know what, this is really bothering me and we need to talk. Yeah, another thing that having that conversation beforehand really helps you do, and this is kind of cruel, but helps you weed out problem players mm -hmm. right off the bat. Well, or at least it lets people, if five people sit down at a table and four people said, I want to talk about, you know, eating angels and, and you know, squishing puppies and all that kind of stuff, and the fifth guy says, I'm not okay with that. It's good that everybody knows that. It's good, and you don't have to change for that fifth guy. You know, the fifth guy can say, "Well, I'm gonna bow out. And call me when you play two or, or whatever it is." Mm -hmm. um, we've spent like almost three quarters of the punk panel talking about, you know, how to avoid, you know, horrible things and how to, you know, not squeak people out or how not to push. Them. But once let's, they say yes, yeah, let's talk about how fucking people are. Let's talk about how flat a fuck people are. Uh, I, 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 want, I, want, I want advice, mean, yeah. mean advice. Um, Honestly, as we found out with Don't Rest Your Head, the quickest way to get all of the characters invested, and Don't Rest Your Head is a, is a horror game, is uh, kidnap a child. Yeah. Mm. That is the fastest way to get Kidnaps, covers in the game. Uh, it's almost a cliché, right? Yeah, yeah it but works. it, it, well, yeah, it draws it together quick, you know? It does. And for con scenarios especially, it's really important yeah. to get that instant buy-in. Right. Yeah. Or do something terrible to an animal, because people who will still, oh yeah, I ran over the three-year-old, will go, <gasps> why'd you do that to the dog? And that's me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's me. The, the scene in the green, green, the green Berets where the dog gets blown up on the beach still makes me cry. So, yeah. yeah. God, that's a terrible. 